And we are live. Welcome to episode 22 of the Retro Slot Podcast. This week we'll be featuring ActRaiser for the Super Nintendo. We got a ton of news to talk about. And Jay has, would you say, about 20 new Something pickups? Something like that, yeah. All it's, right. <laughs> most of them are not good games, too. So it's good. Oh, boy. <laughs> creme de la creme. Let me get my hating Crocs on. <laughs> are those the ones that look like bacon? Yes. Those exist. <laughs> I would bet dollars to donuts that there are Crocs out there that exist that look like bacon. I was at the store with my wife like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, and I saw a American flag themed pair of Crocs. And I was like, oh, my God, they're wonderful in every way. And she said, no, you'd be, I, you I, cannot I wear like, those, not even around the house. <laughs> I feel like you'd be sending a mixed message. What do you mean? Just. I don't want to go into the politics of stuff, but I almost feel like the American flag in some ways has become a kind of a visual of a specific side. Yeah, which another. is messed up, right? Because it's our all I our know. symbol. Yeah. It, it should not be co-opted by one party, but it sort of has been, hasn't it? Mm. And they already have their own flag. The one with the bars, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, why don't they just hold on to that one? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, you know, it, I'm not judging anybody or anything, but it has absolutely become a thing. Yeah, I wore a um, uh, in November when we went to vote, I wore like a beanie hat that has the American flag on it, and my wife said the same thing. She's like, "You look like you know you're you're going to vote vote for a specific person." I was like, "I don't care. <laughs> like yeah. I get to vote for whoever I want with my American flag hat." Yeah. Whatever. What are you gonna do? So with the beanie, was it like the stripes going vertical or were they going horizontal? Uh, the stripes were vertical and the star, it like, but they went around the hat and then the stars, the stars in the blue were at the top of the hat and then it had a, you know, the fluffy part. You had the, <laughs> <laughs> I totally can picture you wearing one of those hats with the, with the puffy. The puffy I posted ball. a picture on Twitter. <laughs> oh man, I missed it. I wanted to talk about oh uh, there was something you were talking about on DC or um, on um, side quest side quest last night and I wanted to bring it up. Uh -huh. It was like right towards the end. Yeah, when and... I couldn't think of the name of Actraiser. No, oh man, I was like, put that away for some jokes tomorrow, and I already <laughs> forgot. <laughs> I already forgot what it was. Okay. I'm sure it'll like, come to you when you I stop may may trying not, to remember like, it, right? Go through the chat replay and try to <laughs> get it. Fine. Um, I've been playing. Uh, this is kind of retro. I mean, uh, Skyward Sword, Legend of Zelda, Zelda Skyward Sword was a Wii game, which is about 20 years old, right? So that's kind of retro. I don't know. Do you think Wii is retro at this point? You've got it too. Yeah, I. I mean, I do think Wii is retro. Um, because it's that 360 era still it's like it's on the cusp it's 15 years now mm -hmm. you know like is it is it like old no but retro sure like retro has like i feel like it has a wide gamut of definition in my head yeah you know, so this is like a is... it's like an hd remake or not remake but an hd update for the game but mm -hmm. they did go in and change some stuff so it's much more fluid it gets they kind of they took out some of the stuff that was really kind of in your face about the tutorials and stuff like that. And they also allowed you to speed up text and all that. And I actually had bought this game for the Wii when it was new. With the Remember the Wii Motion Plus that you had to plug into the bottom mm. of your Wiimote? Had the gold controller. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I fell off of that game almost immediately. I played like maybe an hour of it. Uh, I don't even... I don't even know if I got to the main like continent, like the below world. I think I was like, I hated this game like right at the beginning, but I've been having a ton of fun with this uh, Skyward Sword remake or the HD, HD. I'm just gonna call it HD. Have you been um, playing with controller only? I imagine. I I tried both, uh, and I was playing with controller only uh, because I was mostly playing in handheld mode. Yeah. You're like shaking the whole damn thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I I like the combat because moving that stick around to like attack enemies from different angles with your sword. I thought it was actually pretty fun. Hmm. Yeah, I do want to check it out, but like often these things will stay sealed for a long time. My wife might end up playing this before me. 
yeah. I still have Link's uh, Adventure st- sealed. I haven't, and I got Ooh. that right when it came out. Oh man, um, I'd play that first. Yeah, or Link's Awakening. Excuse me, Link's Awakening. Yeah, um, I play that first. That was really fun. I don't know if I've talked about it much. I don't really. I didn't really like the Wii controls like ever. Like for the only games that I enjoyed, motion controls were like the party games. You know, Wii bowling yeah. and boxing. It was fun. But trying to play a game like Zelda or something that was more story driven and combat driven, like I didn't want to sit there and like swipe my hand. Like I was just like, mm. uh, just didn't. It just, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just old. I don't know. Yeah, it would have been okay if they had just put another analog stick on the Wii Mote so that if if you didn't want to use the motion right. controls, you always had the option, you know. But they by omitting that that right analog stick, you know, because you had that. Yeah, the nunchuck connected to the Wiimote. Right, which in some games it was nice. Yeah, I played Resident Evil 4 all the way through on the Wii, and I loved it because that did use motion control, but just for aiming. So basically it yeah. became almost like a light gun game, Yep, That's which was cool. fun. Like It was and a really fun way to play that game. And you get attachments too. Yeah, yeah, you could. Um, but yeah, I, I mostly agree with you. The, the Wii, there were some great games that came out for the Wii, but... Like it, it really did feel like a compromised console because of the reliance on motion control. Like Mario Galaxy, I think is my favorite 3D Mario. Mm-hmm. It's a great game. Yeah, but it it also doesn't rely on the motion controls that much. Mario Galaxy doesn't. Right. Uh, apparently, somebody in your house agrees with me. <laughs> I I saw Mario I, Galaxy. I <laughs> <laughs> that was an upset scream, not a happy scream. Oh, I, oh, uh, maybe they're I, a big fan of uh, uh, Mario sixty four. Yeah, <laughs> I I changed some settings on Discord because I was noticing when I would laugh, it wouldn't come through the broadcast and it wouldn't come through the recording. Really? So I I changed the sensitivity a little bit so it might pick up stuff in the background a little more. Yeah, uh, people yeah. have families, you know. Yeah, uh, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, requiring motion controls on that stuff was never my favorite. Yeah, the the Wii U didn't require motion controls nearly as much. And I like therefore, the Wii U more. Yeah, I, I think I like the Wii U as a console more. And I, I did actually like the tablet, you know, mm-hmm. portion of the console. I never owned one for myself. I bought one for the kids uh, who then played a ton of it. So I didn't actually play on it much while it was current. When they stopped using it, we unhooked like it from the main TV, and I actually brought it up into the office, and I was messing around with it for, for a while. And a lot of those games that I just missed, I've been going back to. But they've also been coming out on the Switch, so yeah, yeah, uh, that's been nice too. I don't know. I love the Switch, though. I mean, it's I think it's my favorite Nintendo console. Like it's just yeah. it's taking the number one spot. Giving the option of motion control versus not is great mm-hmm. and it's it's almost like a mashup of the wii and the wii u it takes all the best parts and puts them together and makes it current yeah um i think if the wii had options and it had a better controller because they had a classic controller but that was only really used for for virtual console games yeah like but it was know, a nice controller that that classic it, i mean controller yeah was nice. it was kind of like it, it kind of looked like the pro controller but it didn't have it only, i think it only had one joystick it didn't have the second one yeah I and it had right. the d-pad and the four buttons yeah. Um, I don't even think it had shoulder buttons, if I remember correctly, but it had Didn't this it? form factor. It was, God, it I can't even remember like it now. It's It was like stark white. I remember the yeah. look of it. I don't remember exactly. All I remember that. being comfortable. I remember liking it for playing like uh, virtual console games. Oh, yeah. I think that was virtual amazing. console. It's It's amazing to me that they just abandoned the virtual console like they did. Yeah, and there's not more uproar about it. Yeah, yeah, right. How many people games have like paid for? Yeah, like a big library of virtual console games that's just not compatible with, because you know it's, it's probably a licensing thing, like moving that library from console to console. I don't know, because aren't on both PlayStation and Xbox? If you bought something like on the PS3 or Xbox 360 library, you can still play them on current gen. Yeah, that's true. Isn't that how that is? I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it may be. Yeah, I don't know. It's also so if it. it feels like there's a lot of money in doing re-releases of retro games right now. So right. I th- I think that's why you don't see more games in the 
the online service that Nintendo offers. It's because, like, you know, we could, Konami could say, yeah, we could put them all in that service, all our Castlevania games in that service, or we could sell you the Castlevania collection and make, right. you know, make a whole bunch of money. Guess what we're going to choose? Did you see, actually, I didn't even put it in the news. Did you see the, uh, the three or four games that they added to the library recently? No. no. <laughs> It's Internet Meme City. It was like oh, really? Claymates, Kaboom. Oh. And then like another European only crappy release. Yeah, I did and see everybody that. I was thought like, you were talking about the, 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 the Castlevania collection. I'm like, they added games to the Castlevania collection? <laughs> no, 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 no. The, yeah. <laughs> the Nintendo Switch Online thing. Yeah. It was like, wow, what bottom bargain bin barrel did you pull these from? Right? <laughs> <laughs> But Claymates yeah, actually weird. isn't a terrible game, but it's just weird. It's a weird game. Yeah. Um, I've been playing a lot of video games, though, in the last two weeks. Like, between Skyward Sword, uh, I've been playing a lot of Guilty Gear Strive, which, not retro, it's a brand new game. And then Razor, I'll be honest, it really did grab my attention. Like, this mm-hmm. game is good. It's real good. Did you beat it? Because I know that it's a fairly short play. I did not beat it. Uh, I'm looking forward to beating it. And welcome back to episode 22 of the Retro Slot Podcast. <laughs> uh, had a little technical issue there. I lost power uh, about 10 minutes into a podcast, which is no good. Uh, it, I might be able to recover the original 10 minutes. I might not. Uh, so we're just going to go from the top here. Uh, we talked about uh, Skyward Sword a little bit. We're both enjoying that. There were some issues with motion controls on the Wii. We discussed if the Wii was a uh, retro console, and we both kind of agreed, eh, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, won't this... It, this will still be on Twitch. The, the VOD will be on Twitch, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to bring up... I, I found... I, I scoured for all of 10 seconds the because I like to skip to the end. The side quest chat. Yes. And I okay. remembered what my what my giving you shit was. You were talking about your e-bike. Yeah, yeah, I got an e-bike. Yeah. Yeah. So for some reason when I hear the term e-bike, I'm thinking of like, you know, a fictional bike. It's, it's like a... a a fictional bike? It's like a magic bike. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's not real, right? You know, okay. You're talking about something actually like an electric electric bike. Yeah. Going out. And I'm picturing you like in a like a full flight simulator setup with like <laughs> oh, oh okay <laughs> like a virtual bike <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah you're like i was going everywhere yeah it was great i've been using that a lot and yeah i i have really come to enjoy this e-bike i i, I think it's like three or four weeks old now so i'm outside the return policy <laughs> so you love it you know? yeah so i love it um but it's power assisted. It's got a motor on it and a battery and it doesn't drive by itself. It's not a motorcycle, right? What it does is it just, it senses how much power you're putting on the pedal and the motor assists that. And you can turn the motor up and down like the power so that you can, uh, you can have it basically off. So it's just a regular bike uh, or you can have it on like turbo mode that will really help you get up like a really steep hill, um, which makes uh kind of getting back on a bike a lot less intimidating you know what i mean it's like Uh, one of those uh if you ever go to the gym which i haven't been to in years but if and when you ever went to the gym speaking to myself uh you know those pull-up assist things where you put your knees on the pad and they help you like yes yeah Yeah. they're like counterweight assist type things that's yeah kind of what i picture for a bike yeah i what it what it allows me to do is just jump on a bike being, you know, I, I was basically very injured for a year and a half. Uh, and during that year and a half, I mean, several months I was basically, I was either in bed or on a couch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, you know, it got it got better as I went. Uh, but now, I, I, you know, I'd like to get some activity in. And this is kind of takes some of the, uh, some of the intimidation factor out of it. And I've been riding it like crazy, which has really been fun. Nice. So, you want to talk about the news? Sure thing. What do we got? There's a lot of stuff this week. Oh, almost just spilled my water. Um, There's a new free game called Slow Mole. 
uh, that you can play on like emulation systems. And there's like cute little, if you click that link in the news and you watch that video, there's like a claymation stop motion animation trailer type thing, which is kind of funny because it's a free game. Yeah. Um, but they are apparently coming out with a cartridge eventually cool. that you will be able to buy. But it looks like an extremely difficult 8-bit platformer, and you're this mole who moves very slowly, but everything around you moves really fast. Oh, that sucks. So you have to, like, <laughs> dodge all these things. But apparently there's a really cool um, checkpoint mechanic that will only award a checkpoint when you've like beat a screen and moved on and then you have like a checkpoint okay so yeah it looks like kind of like a, a 2d puzzler right yeah almost yeah like an 8-bit uh what's the name of that platformer the uh meat boy super meat boy oh super meat boy like yeah. that but you're not fast okay <laughs> and it's 8-bit i like the way it looks like the graphics are pretty good yeah. I'll probably pick this up actually. I'll for at free. least download yeah. it for free. I mean. <laughs> thought that, that was kind of fun. Um slow mole. So uh, they show thing... the inside of the cartridge, but they don't show the outside of the cartridge yet. Right. Yeah. Circuitry okay. they're working yeah. on. Do you remember Chips Challenge? Yeah. So that's getting a console release. <laughs> for the first Wait. time ever. It, it was never was on console? Game. Oh no, okay. it was like it was a PC game, and um, oh, what else was it on? Yeah, it was in. It was a uh, Atari Lynx. Apparently, Lynx. It was the original okay. release, and then it came as part of a bundled software. So, if you had like a Windows what ninety five, you know, computer or something like that, this would have been built into the PC. It would have been one of the one of the, like Minesweeper and Ships Challenge and all that kind of stuff. Really? So I remember specifically, it's like a puzzle game and they have like little computer chips and you got to like, I don't remember too much about the game, but I do specifically remember playing it and um, and it getting pro progressively harder. So it's just kind of fun that it's becoming a uh, cartridge. However, I will say that the company that's making this seems like they might be new to the scene and some of the like their website is really basic and stuff. but. Um, it's 50 bucks for like a complete in box or 25 bucks for the cartridge. Okay. So if you want to play it on like original console hardware, that's going to be the price point of that. That's interesting to take a game from the Lynx and put it on the SNES and the Genesis. Mm -hmm. The, the and, Lynx was not one of the consoles I owned. You didn't, do you have you ever no, owned a Lynx? No, no, yeah. No, definitely I've not. never, and uh, I don't have a lot of fond memories of, like link software being like something that was really driving me toward that system either. Which is funny because as a piece of hardware, it was pretty revolutionary, but it was kind of swept under the rug. Cause it was like what the first backlit screen. Yeah. And, and it, it did that rotating mode. So you yeah, could you use can it. do it vertical to play shooters and stuff. Yeah. And you could also play two player, I think on one. Couldn't you? Uh, I don't know. I can't Maybe. remember. You might've been able to do vertical and do like two player stuff. Yeah. conceptually i don't know like it's one of those things it's like the dreamcast you know technology that just wasn't quite ready for mainstream yet and stuff and they also probably didn't have the marketing you better budget. shut your mouth about that dreamcast <laughs> i will be coming no, over I'm, there <laughs> no i'm saying i'm saying I'm it, was a great you. Piece of, it was a great piece of hardware that wasn't oh, okay. recognized <laughs> across you know it just kind of <laughs> fizzled out sadly i don't know was the atari Lynx the last piece of hardware that atari made no, the Jaguar was after the Lynx, right? Okay, okay. I didn't realize that the... Okay. Yeah, Jaguar definitely would have been later. So, apparently the new thing to do with a lot of these companies that are kind of coming out with physical releases is to take forgotten, never-released titles that may have been started but not finished and, and bring it back. And there's another one that is from trying to there's pre-orders for for these like forgotten games and i'm trying to remember who's developing this fun stock fun, fun stock so 40 winks which i've heard of before actually 40 winks for the n64 uh exploding fist 
for the NES, which I think is the best name Sounds ever. Dope. Like, <laughs> exploding fist. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, Tin Head, which I've heard of that character before for the SNES. Yeah, and that came out. Tin Head is a game. Uh, in the US? Or on Super Nintendo? Maybe that. Maybe it was a Genesis game? Yeah, Iron it came Commando. out on the Genesis. Or maybe, so, I guess, yeah. And then Iron Commando for the SNES are coming out. And they're available available for pre-order from funstock.co.uk. Huh. So it's you know, if you're in the U.S., it's going to be, yeah, seventy dollars for forty winks, but it's complete in box. Fifty for Exploding Fist and fifty-five for Iron Commander. But it has like all the box manual type stuff. I mean, It'd be way more interesting if the ROMs had been found and <laughs> released, so I can right, just check them right. out. But I don't really want to spend good money on on unfinished games, especially well, of this caliber. Right. Well, I was going to say, like, there has to be some kind of community that is into collecting some of these kind of newer release cartridges right or is it just too early for people to get really into it i don't know like because i have no interest personally um so i guess if you if you're out there and you're listening and you're like super into all these re-releases and new release old games and new release new game cartridge type deals if you're into it I'd love to to hear about it, like on Twitter or YouTube comments or whatever. Like, it's why? especially perilous when everything's like got to be pre ordered now, and if you don't pre order, you miss out. So you can't even wait for reviews on a product because right. yeah. once the review comes out and the review says, "Oh my God, this is the best thing ever," you know, it's too bad you missed out. So yeah. it's like so many of these things you have to just go on faith, and that you know, so Tin like Head didn't make a big back, splash on the like Genesis, we're going back as far as I know. Years. Briar, we're going back 20 years to the times where we didn't have that luxury. What do you mean? Like old school NES, SNES, Genesis games. We didn't always have reviews. I mean, we had EGM and GamePro and we After had magazines. Released, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we could find it on the shelf at that point. Right. It, a lot of stuff now. It's like if you don't get in on a pre-order, then uh, there's there's games that just you miss out on like I mean limited run is probably the most famous example of that right is like right. game comes out in limited run I don't think that although for the most part limited run are, is taking a previously digital only release so there's reviews on the game at least yeah um, this is I mean I don't know I mean maybe there'll be plenty of stock on this but it's just kind of weird it's not a particularly motivating group of games though <laughs> it might be a bad idea to google exploding fist game but i'm gonna do it mm, yes i think you should <laughs> the safe search of the off <laughs> <laughs> the way of the exploding fist 4.6 out of 5 on classic reload.com okay was it a commodore 64 game oh it's a port Karate simulation for Commodore 64. ZX Spectrum. But it got good reviews. <laughs> like 80s, 90s. Yeah, for the Commodore 64. It looks really basic. <laughs> it's revolutionary. Yeah, I don't know. 1985. I mean, Tin Head is the most like famous game on this list. And... Like, that's not really speaking well for this list. Whatever, yeah. though. I mean, if you're into it, I'm not shitting on your parade. Yeah. You do you, do you friendo. Stop pooping in people's cereal. Um, yeah. <laughs> Super Mario 3 PC demo disc surfaces. I'm pretty sure it was a three and a quarter inch disc. Uh-huh. Uh, at the Strong National Museum of Play. Like, it was just, like, buried in their stuff, and they just oh, came no across kidding. it. <laughs> so the story on this was uh, the developer of Doom, John Romero, uh, released a video port of uh, the PC port of Super Mario 3. Basically, they they pitched to Nintendo like, hey, we really like your Super Mario 3 game. Let us make it for you on PC. Yeah. And so they made a tech demo and pitched it to Nintendo. And Nintendo was like, nah. <laughs> yeah. Also, we're probably going to see you now. <laughs> Probably. 
I wonder if this was after, uh, because didn't wasn't there some lawsuit with ID Software and Nintendo back in the day? I don't remember something. I can't remember, but um, yeah, there's some pictures and stuff here that were from from Twitter and and whatnot, and it's a very short tech demo, but it looks pretty impressive because they were saying how you know the PC couldn't really do scrolling screens back then. Yeah. And they made this tech demo in like a week or something mm. like that, like in a very short amount of time in their spare time. So it's just interesting. I mean, I wonder if it would have made much of a difference to Nintendo back in the day. They probably would have just because they don't do they license. They still don't really license Nintendo games for other platforms like no. at all. No, they never really have. I mean, that's. I think that's kind of one of their things. They're one of the few companies that make uh, profit on their hardware too. So they're perfectly happy to just lock everything down to their hardware. Although they sure. do, they have started making games for phones over the last few right. years. Yeah, But they're completely different. Yeah. You know? They're yeah. mobile games. They're not. Yeah. They're, they're like free to play slash give us money for things type mobile games yeah i don't know it's kind of interesting little footnote in history especially that was made by john romero yeah there's a whole there's a documentary on i think it's on doom can't remember where i saw it whether it was on amazon or not yeah i saw that too it was on one of the streaming services it was good watch that yeah yeah so the next thing 25 seconds new of new earthbound 64 footage has surfaced i mean this has been out before. Um, I I have not played Earthbound still. I should. But they were supposed to bring out, you know, Earthbound 64, which would have been known as Mother 3. So it was kind of like Earthbound 2, Mother 3. So they just named it Earthbound 64. But there was a sale of a disc, CD-ROM from 1998, on some Japanese website. And a person named Zen, Real Zen 64, picked it up for $357. And on that disc included 25 seconds of previously unseen footage from Earthbound 64 from the 1997 Space World event in Japan. It actually, like, it looks solid. Like, it doesn't look half assed. Wasn't the 1997 Space World where they also showed Final Fantasy VII for the N64? Could be. I honestly don't know. Um, Somebody was like, would they be able to bring back this game on a 64? And it's like, there's there's like a minute's worth of footage. How are you going to bring back a game? Well, it might not actually be running on an N64, too. Like that Final Fantasy VII demo that they showed, which was just really... Yeah, that was... I think that was 1997 too in which case you got to think it was either running on a pc that was kind of like Good. supposed to look like an n64 you know like or it was just pre-rendered or who knows what it was but because this is on a cd not like this isn't code running on an n64 right, right? i mean it it's just be. a video yeah it's just a video but it looks like it could I mean, it looks like PS1 and 64 era graphics. It doesn't look like it's, you know, PS2 graphics or something like that. No, for sure not. For those Earthbound enthusiasts that haven't watched it. Yeah. You've never played Earthbound either. I've never played it. Um, I've started it. Yeah. It's just, it's very weird. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Like, I feel like I have to get connected to the story to enjoy a game like that. Because. Yeah kind of kitschy it's just kind of funky but i know a lot of people love it um so this is kind of weird the news story said collection of mint nes games fetches thirty thousand on goodwill and this is on nintendo life i did some digging because i was like what games from goodwill would go for that much so because like every news story none of them talked about the specific games and like i couldn't find it so i've eventually searched 
on Google, like Goodwill sold listings and stuff. And the only thing I found within the last couple of months going for anything close to this amount was a Nintendo gaming system and games that sold for just over 20,000. So it was 20,001 dollars as opposed to the 30,002 dollars reported on this. So I don't know if it's the same story, but basically it's an NES with like it's only like 5 or 6 games, but the reason it went for so much is because there's presumably it looks from the pictures a sealed in box uh Final Fantasy, the original OG NES one and a sealed in box zelda classic series link zelda 2 and there might even be other sealed games but the pictures i guess it would be nes open and another game the pictures are not great so somebody took a gamble on this uh based on the sealed games i'm sure because sealed final fantasy has been fetching a pretty penny in graded condition so 20k just, Can you uh, imagine kind of anticlimactic giving... after like a million and a half for an N64 game last week? Twenty <laughs> <laughs> like, eh, K. But I'm just saying, like, can you Find imagine your mom cushions. giving your box <laughs> of old stuff to Goodwill and it going for twenty grand? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that would piss me off. There was apparently a sealed NES in there too, or something like an oh, unused sealed NES. NES? Or like sealed NES is the, there was I don't think it was even like a sticker on the box, but basically all the peripherals and everything were oh, in okay. their bag, unused kind of deal. That's generally what happens. Um, so next thing we talked about, I I think I mentioned the the Nintendo World Championship cart that sold for 180k two weeks ago as part of that big like week long auction on Heritage Auctions, the 8.5 rated one that sold for 180k is it was bought by an investment group um otis so this website is one of those websites where you can go and you can own a part basically you can own stock in these collectibles right and this game is now part of that the highest graded ever nintendo world championship cart is not owned by anybody specifically and you can own a piece of it and it's just such a weird thing it's like nfcs you're owning the idea of something oh you're not actually like sharing in the like if they sell it you don't get any money no you do if they if they were to sell that at a profit or something you would see a return and you can also like say there's only so many stocks quote unquote stocks of it so if 5000 people buy into it there's none left so then you could presumably sell yours at a profit if somebody else wanted it but this mm. website it has everything <laughs> There's like Michael Jordan rookie cards, there's comic books, there's shoes, there's other sealed video games on there. So this it's this is not the first website that has done this kind of thing. We've talked about another one before. I don't remember which one it was. Is this why all this shit is going on at crazy prices? It's no. Stuff like this? I mean, investor groups in general, sure. But this is yeah. I, I don't think any investor group is spending one point five million dollars on Super Mario sixty four sealed, but this is uh not a world that I care about. No. It's weird. <laughs> it's, it's just like I don't know. I don't I don't I don't understand what they're up to and because of that I probably don't trust it. Well, I think a lot of this stuff you can buy shares for like ten bucks. Yeah. So and then what do I do you don't with have that share? No- yeah, it's it's like if you don't have the ability to buy games yourself and you just want to own a piece of it, like I can I own one that, but... one five thousandth of a video game. <laughs> right. That I'll yeah. never get to play. It's kind of weird. I was reading a story on Reddit the other day and somebody posted a picture on like game collecting and, and they had bought Minish Cap for like 40 bucks when it was brand new and they never opened it. So it was sealed in box on their shelf. And somebody commented like, well, why don't you open it and play it and enjoy it? And he's like, if I want to do that, I can just go buy a cart and play it. Yeah. I'm not going to open this when it's worth thousands of dollars. And the person's like, well, why are you perpetuating the value of a game like this that's sealed when it should be played? It's like, dude, where is basically... that block button again? <laughs> it's like you're telling somebody <laughs> to throw dollars away. Like why? We didn't influence the price of stuff. We're just, you know, being aware of it doesn't make us scummy. I don't know. 
it's bizarre. Some people's logic is bizarre. Yeah. Did you just delete something from the? Yeah, because I I just realized it was a duplicate. Oh, okay. You put the same thing. Got it. Yeah. Uh. Here, let me. I'll talk about the one before, and then you can talk about that thing since you know about it too. So. Tag. I don't know how to pronounce this. Tag. Tag. Hure. Yeah. Collab with Super Mario for a for a new watch. It goes for the low low price of two thousand. I think it was like two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. What an odd number. Yeah. Why not like nineteen ninety nine? Holy shit! I love this watch though. Yeah, it's a dope watch, <laughs> and it's got like technology <laughs> built in, like smart watch technology. So Mario is there, and he congratulates you, and does like a little flourish when you walk a certain amount of steps or whatever. You know, like a whatever the the Fitbit kind of deal. Yeah, that's awesome. The it, so it's it's a I mean, it's like a diving style watch with like a bezel that rotates around it. And the bezel has like a star uh, where, what is that? Like the 50 would be and a mushroom where the, the 15 would be. And then the face of it looks like it's a, it's a, it's a digital face, but it's round. Not digital. It's a, it's an LCD face and it's round, but it has a, uh, like uh, all sorts of Mario stuff on it. So one one view, it just shows the time like twelve oh eight digitally, and Mario is just kind of standing on a pipe. But another screen below that has like what looks like an analog face, uh, which actually looks pretty good. I don't know, I this mean, is a cool looking watch. I wouldn't buy it for two thousand dollars, but <laughs> the packaging looks amazing as well. Like just the, the overall, I. I'm not into watches. I'm not, I don't like more of a Casio on. man. I, I'm not even wearing my wedding ring right now. I should probably put that on. <laughs> I like, do the same I, thing. It drives me nuts. It drives my I wife can't nuts when play I video it games with anything on. Like I can't, I drum if I have anything on my wrists or hands, it just, it gets, uh, I'm just weird that way, I guess. But yeah, it, it's, it's a dope watch that would sit on a shelf. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty neat. I, I, I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm, I'm not a watch collector. Uh, but I like it. I think it's is neat. this like the new Rolex? Like Rolex is for nerds. I'm into it. That's cool. <laughs> Nerd. You chic. got a Rolex. I got a fucking Mario watch. Yeah. You idiot. You idiot. <laughs> if they came out with a Zelda one, I might be tempted. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to get the next one? Uh yeah. Okay, so this one's kind of neat. Uh, retro fighters have have been coming out with uh, controllers for retro consoles. New new controllers for retro consoles for a they're while now. Too. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, and they just released one, or they are they just revealed one for the original PlayStation, the PlayStation 1, that's going to be wireless. It has dual analog sticks uh, and kind of a modern... Uh, I mean, it, it looks a lot like a, you know, a modern Xbox w One controller or a Switch Pro controller kind of shape. Uh, it looks pretty good. I mean... It's hard to say how they'll feel till you get them in hand. I've reviewed a couple of these over time, and like I've had kind of quibbles about them. They're like the, they're not heavy enough for me. Yeah, they feel kind of light. Yeah, but it is nice to have a new wireless controller using modern yeah. wireless, um, you know, uh, communication methods. To, yeah, to use on original hardware. I did that for the yeah. N64 because there's not. I did too. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like that controller a lot, actually. The the one for the Dreamcast, I liked less. Hmm. Uh, the one for the N64 had a rotten D-pad, I thought. Really? Uh, but how often do you use a D-pad on an N64? Right. You, you I don't. mean, it made sense for an N64 game because N64 controllers are tough to play with to begin with. Plus, there's no modern yeah. way to play an N64 game, really. So it made sense, and it, they're not. Too, it was like thirty or forty bucks. It wasn't exorbitant. Yeah, they're not expensive. The Dreamcast one was the same thing. It's like you know, Dreamcast controllers are getting rare. It's nice to have a wireless version. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that expensive, but I didn't love the analog stick on that one. So I, they're yeah. good, but they're not great. They don't. They're not like eight bit do quality. If right, you know what That's I mean. True. Let it be note noted that uh, this does have the PlayStation analog stick placement, so the two in line which I generally don't like because it, it really kind of stresses your wrist to push them both in. Um, but for those that like that style and also 
it can be used for PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. Oh, that's nice. Cool. So you can pick that up. It's on Kickstarter right now for $34 or, or retail for $40 for $39.99. So Retro Fighters, Kickstarter, PS1, PS2 controllers. It says the battery is supposed to be 10 plus hours per charge. That's great. So on like a USB-C or whatever. I, I like that this company's out there doing this. I, th I yeah. think they just need just that next step up in quality, though. Maybe this is the one, though, right? It's like maybe this is the one that has everything going on. Well, um, it seems like the market for this is somewhere between the kind of general consumer and the kind of collector type vibe. It's not like a high, it's not like an analog product. It's more like a Retron product for people who. Like, just want a wireless controller that works, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's more... They do have cheaper ones, but this is probably the best value that you're going to get. It's just... A, a do I think, is, like, raise the game. Like, I, I think the a do I use the the Pro 2 controller as my main Switch controller when I'm playing not in handheld mode because I think it's actually better than the first-party Switch Pro controller. Oh, like, wow. I think it's better. And I you think like that stick placement better because I can't do that. Like, well, mostly yeah. I use the D pad. OK, that looks like a more like a PlayStation control. I prefer the Xbox placement or even the ones with the two. Um, so the the switch pro controller has like an Xbox joystick placement. But yeah. the Wii U one had both joysticks up top, which I, I like that one. Yeah, that was neat because it's just really neutral hand position. You don't have to like really stress your hands at all to use the joysticks. Yeah. I don't really have a preference where my, uh, my analog sticks are. I find both positions to be relatively comfortable, but you I am very hands. picky about D pads. Uh, and there is a dearth of good D pads in the gaming yeah. industry right now. Yeah. Well, and props to eight bit do do they like remade their, SNES controllers because they knew that they had D-pad issues. Yeah. So like they came out with a new one with a fixed D-pad, which is like companies don't do that thing. You know, they don't do that stuff. They're like, yeah, you deal with it. You know. Yeah. Um. But I was just gonna say the main reason I don't like PlayStation controllers is because I don't have giant hands, but I don't have teeny hands. They're like, I mean, I'm short, but I have big palms and short fingers. So big like palms, short fingers. Like if I'm like, you see how much like if I'm using the controller, look at all that. It's like it's putting a bunch of stress here for me because I really have to stretch. Like that's yeah, as far as my that. finger yeah. goes at all. Like and so the it's PS5 really... controller is big too compared to a previous like, PlayStation controller. Doing that, I'm getting like twinges in my hands and stuff. But the Xbox controllers, it's way more like I don't know. Like the the triggers aren't as far down and stuff, and it's just more natural, neutral positioning. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you're you look like you're stretched out there. I like it depends on the person. But this yeah. the eight bit do one is not much of a stretch. You have big hands though, I can tell. <laughs> what do they say about a guy with big Mitz. hands, right? <laughs> Huge <laughs> gloves. Extra large gloves. They're hard to find in stores, honestly. <laughs> it's like, really he's dwarf, it. like he's showing me on the camera and his hands like bigger than the whole controller. It's fine. <laughs> so I think that's it for news. Kind of a slow news week, I guess. No, no up, big, no 1.5 million N64 yeah. cartridges being sold. That still confuses me, to be honest with you. I still don't know what's going on. I'm convinced that there's something shady about it. Everybody's convinced. like money laundering. You know? <laughs> right? <laughs> like something's going on. It made sense because it was like, well, now, you know, somebody can say I spent $1.5 million on a thing. There's receipts that trace back, you know. Yeah, there's no like questioning, and the the only question would be like, well, you know, was it really worth that much? It's like, well, it was worth that much to me, okay, you right? Know? So I don't know, some kind of like tax shelter or something for the ultra rich, maybe, like art, something like that. I don't know, something's fucked. <laughs> Something smells fucky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what does that smell like? Cheese? I don't Tuna? know. Like gouda. <laughs> oh, it's been out in the sun for a while. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some ActRaiser because I'm really excited about this game. This is yeah. my first experience with ActRaiser. It's been a famous game in the Super NES's library 
for as long as the Super NES has really been around. It was a pretty early release for the Super Nintendo. But I just never got around to it, right? It always looked good in magazines. Screenshots of it always looked good. But, you know, for whatever reason, I never got around to it. Did you ever get to play this one before we did this? I played it a little bit as a kid. But some of the things that I'm going to touch on, like, as a kid trying to navigate some of the UI, UX stuff, I got stuck. And I think I just got frustrated and put it put it down is what I yeah. remember. Um, it's not very, it doesn't hold your hand like at all it doesn't really tell you what you're supposed to do you have to kind of like tinker around and figure it out um which is something i dislike in games this game um it got great reviews from like everywhere it's on everybody's like top list people were upset it wasn't on the snes classic it's got one of the best soundtracks ever um, which actually the soundtrack has been released recently on cd and vinyl it's sold out on vinyl but you can pick it up if I can't have uh, it on they, vinyl, I don't want it. It's like a big blue record. It looks dope. That's cool. But there's just things about this game that I got frustrated with. Um, it it doesn't tell you like where to go, what to do. You just have to like try all the options and see what works. So it'll be like, no, you can't do that right now, you know. And so you'll try the next thing. It's like, oh, you're gonna go fight monsters now to clear out the things for the thing. I'm like okay and so you do the 2d stuff which the platforming in it is not super real um, quick for anybody who hasn't played it it's yeah, sorry. It, there's two different aspects to this game right there's a god mode game where you kind of you you it's an overhead perspective and you basically are like playing like a god game like populous or sim city or something like that mm-hmm. uh, and you got to protect your citizens from monsters that fly in with your little cupid kind of angel your little yeah your little (laughs) naked angel and you fly around with your naked angel and you can shoot like monsters that are flying in but you also kind of show your citizens where to build and you can you have access to like you know lightning and fire and i don't think fire actually lightning and sunlight and stuff like that you can basically do this like kind of god mode game but then to progress at certain points you have to play a 2d side scrolling action game. So there's like kind of these two different parts to this game and you kind of alternate between them as you progress through the story. Sorry, go ahead. My no, bad. it's okay. Um there were aspects that I liked. I did like the kind of Sim City esque part of it as an idea, right? It was a little tedious to have to like continue to keep track of the little demons that were coming in while your villagers were like building and trying to get over there and stuff like that. So it like I enjoyed that part, um, but like I said, when you go to the 2D stuff, the platforming was kind of janky. Um, it was one of those platformers where if you jump, like once you've committed to a direction and a distance, you're like you're all in on that. You, you can jump. change direction in air. You can at least slow yourself down in air. Can you? Yeah, definitely can slow yourself down. I don't know if you could actually change direction like Mario. Right. But it just, it felt kind of heavy. The platforming stuff feels felt a deliberate. Bit heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the boss fights were fairly easy until I got to the one that I was just like, all right, I'm done. Which <laughs> one was the, that? The waterfall with the little platforms and the snake coming in. And if you got hit, it was like a ninja gain effect where you just like flew off and you die. It's like, there's nowhere to go. Um, and it was just this long snake. So it's not like you could just jump over it because it would go in a straight line. So you just like hit it again. Um, so I kind of gave up after that, but there were some, the, the previous boss, I basically cheesed it because I used the, there was like a magic thing where stars would come down and it took like half his life out in one ability. I was like, oh, yeah. okay, well, <laughs> easy piece. Yeah. That one's, that one feels like cheesing. <laughs> like it's that good. <laughs> and, I mean, it's a, you have, you have access to this magic power. It's not like you're doing something like right. putting in a code or something, but it's, it crushes that think, boss. The the boss before it was very like the first two bosses or first three bosses, they're very easy because the the pattern in which they jump around is methodically the same every single time. It'll go like up, up, across, down, 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 up, up, across. It's just the same. You yeah. just have to sit there and wait and whack whack and then wait for him to do his thing, come back, whack, whack. Um but the I think the thing that was there's just little things that frustrated me, like 
when you were doing God mode and they'd be like, here, take this thing that's going to save us. It's like, it didn't actually give you anything in your inventory. You'd have, no, to, you go have to go yeah. and, and receive the offering or whatever, even though it said they gave you a thing. And some of those moments were unclear. Like, I'm like, where's that loaf of bread that I need to save Timmy? You know, do you, like, do you have a manual? I do. Yeah. Did you read the manual? I didn't know. Okay. I wonder if reading the manual would have cleared this stuff up or if it, Possible. if it wouldn't have been at all. I was thinking like a guide would have definitely helped. Um, Cause there was that, that was kind of tedious. And then there was also other moments where something would happen and it would be infinitely unclear what you're supposed to do next. Um, there was a part where I finished the second village and the villagers were like, we're ornery and upset and da 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 da. I was like, I don't know what to do. So like literally I was on stream and I was like, well, fuck the village. And I like lightning strike them and they all died. <laughs> they all died. And I was like, not come You're on a now, cruel you God. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I still, it's still like when you looked at, when you would like listen in, it still said that they were like upset. They were fighting. You know, yeah. Have, it didn't have the little icons flashing anymore, but <laughs> they were all dead. <laughs> they literally like, got electrocuted. I tried every option. I was like, should I, in, should I put wheat here? No, that didn't do anything. This, yeah, that, you don't unlock the option to make those people happy until later in the game. Right. So I, I Googled it and it's like, you basically can't do anything about it right now. You have to come back. And I was like, well, wait. it's not yeah. clear in the game. Like, yeah. you know, so I was stuck doing that for like 20 minutes and just kind of, was feeling frustrated so it's i think the earliness of the game shows it it's a good game that i got hung up on some of the menial stuff that probably shouldn't have mattered but those and you know i could say this about any game if there's something that is so frustrating to a player that they stop playing that's a problem in my opinion yeah yeah i would agree they can't figure out how to solve it and I had people in chat like, try this, try that, try this. And I couldn't, I yeah. literally had to Google it. I had to Google that same issue that you just said about the villagers who weren't happy. Mm -hmm. But it was, it wasn't a problem for me. I was actually, oh, okay. Like, I just need to wait. Um, but it, the only reason it bothered me was because I was so invested in my villages at that point. Like, yeah. that was only the second village. And You're I was like, already. Oh, I it. Yeah. I was already invested in my villages in there because what this game does is as your villages thrive, they find things around on the map and they will, you know, they'll, they'll, your villagers will do things, right? Not necessarily like you don't see them doing these things, but the game will just kind of randomly come up and say, hey, your villages, you know, your villagers found, we're out fishing and found a relic in the sea mm -hmm. and they give it to you and that gives you a new magic power or the ability to use magic powers twice or more HP. Right. And like, so the better your villagers are doing and the bigger your village becomes, the stronger you become, which I think is a really cool relationship. And I, I agree with you that some of this stuff wasn't super clear, but by the time I was done with my second village, I pretty much had a hang on what, all the controls did and what I needed to do. Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah. it, it, it wasn't spelled out for me. I also didn't have the manual. I didn't read the manual beforehand. So I just kind of had to like press all the buttons to figure it out. But there's not so many buttons that I really like, I felt overwhelmed at any one point in time. It's a pretty simplistic, yeah, it like is. God game. Right. But I found it really enjoying and really relaxing. Cause you're kind of, it does this kind of loop where when you first come to a new settlement, uh, you'll you'll land there. You, your little uh, your naked angel c comes flying out, and you know you have this little like base, right? And then you tell your people where you want them to start building. And the the eventual goal is that you want them to build outwards toward the monster spawn area, and which uh, there's a bunch of on every map. And then once they build out that way, they can close the monster spawn area. So the first few minutes are usually pretty hectic because you're trying to get your your guys to build out in that direction there may be uh obstacles in your way like bushes or rocks or 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 swamps and you have to kind of clear the way for them but you also have to protect them from all the monsters that are coming around from these spawners uh and that that is a little bit stressful first 
first part, but you kind of get past that. You start cutting down on the amount of monsters that are around, and then you kind of settle into this kind of what I found to be a pretty enjoyable and pretty relaxing kind of god god sim, right? And I was kind of enjoying that part of it. And then it comes to the story will progress at a certain point. You'll hit like a you know a certain occupancy level, and the the villagers all along the way are saying, "Hey, you know, we found this rock over here. If you blow this rock up, there's, you know, we might be able to settle there." And oh, well, now there's like a magic power that you get for that. Um, I don't know. Like it somehow, even though it's Super Nintendo, it's all text. Um, it somehow made me connect with my populace, which I really enjoyed. And then you progress to a certain part of the story and you are now you now have to go and fight monsters in the 2d mode and i found the 2d mode to be actually really enjoyable it's definitely deliberate um in a castlevania way i think it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of playing like the original castlevania games i don't think it's it quite as forgiving. good i don't think it's quite as good as castlevania but because it's it's half of the game like i don't think it has to be but it was really good looking um, the 2D like side scrolling parts were extremely good looking, and I kind of liked, you know, the simp simpleness of my controls. Right, it's like I had like a slash, I had a, a crouching slash and a jump and like, and a magic right. power. And like that's those are the tools I got. I gotta make them work. Um, the the level design was different enough from stage to stage that I was always kind of like looking around and pretty happy with what I was seeing. And I like the bosses. There's a ton of bosses. There is, unfortunately, a boss rush at the end of the game, which is a bummer. Uh, so you do have to, like, you fight all the like bosses. Kind of, Yeah, you, you got to fight all the bosses, and then you finally get to Satan at the end. Which is, you know, I, that's not my favorite thing in video games, but it's there. But yeah, I, I'm actually, I found this game to be, the two parts to both be so enjoyable that I was like, you ever read a book where the chapter, the chapters like alternate between different characters and you, you like get to a point with one character and you can't wait to see what happens next. But then the author switches to a different character for the next chapter. You're like, Oh, but wait, what happened to that guy? Yeah. And then you start reading this chapter and you, you're still, you're enjoying this one, but then they do the same thing at the next chapter. You're like, Oh, wait, what happened to her? You yeah. know, <laughs> like that's what this lost. felt like to me. It's like watching Lost. Almost. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it felt like to me because I was enjoying each step along the journey so much that when it would switch, I'd be like, oh, wait, I was having so much fun like building my town. Oh, wait, I was having so much fun doing 2D combat. Like, I, I really enjoyed both both of the aspects of this game. Um, this, you know, I'm, I'm glad I guess I never played it before because I'm having so much fun playing it now. <laughs> yeah. I... I, I hear you and I, I agree on a lot of points. I think I'm just being overly critical as sometimes I it just like sometimes frustrations in games can dictate my enjoyment level of something, which is yeah. unfortunate because I was enjoying like, you know, building the town out. And, and once I kind of figured out that rhythm, it felt good. And then there's just a couple of stop points along the way. And I was just as you were talking, flipping through the manual. And there are two specific things that would have absolutely helped me. <laughs> One, there's an area guide with numbers to know where the hell to go next. Uh, yes, like, I had to look that up. Yeah. Like it says Fillmore is number one. That's what I did do first. Blood pool is number two, which is what I did second. But then the third one, I was like, I don't know where to go. Do I go up? Do I go down? Yeah. So I absolutely did not go to number three. I'm pretty sure I skipped to like four. Uh, I think I went up because Cassandora is supposed to be number three. And then Itos is supposed to be number four. I think I did it in like in reverse. So I may have gotten to a point where I was, not strong enough to You're deal with leveled for the content then, you know so yeah. it could have been that and then the next thing in the back of the manual every city has a to-do list oh shit really <laughs> it literally like tells you step by step what's going to happen in that city what you have to do and also like an items list for things that you will be getting in that city nice like like a complex like step by step Oh, you're gonna have to fax me a copy of that so i <laughs> it's it's straight up almost a guide like that's awesome it's crazy and then also i think there's also i don't know if this is yeah this is an item 
so here I'll show you this as well. I have like the poster item list thing with the map in it. Oh and wow! It shows where all the items come from, and then it shows all the bosses on the bottom. Yeah, so I was fighting the fourth boss when I didn't even fight the third boss, so that may have made it. And then there's this dope poster on the back. That is that's metal as hell. <laughs> I, I really like the um it, one of the story points of this is that you are God, right? Or I, I don't they they call you the master or something, but you're God. It, yeah. And when you when you kind of teleport down to the 2D action part, you inhabit like a stone statue. And then you are now like you are the, you know, you're that player, which is I, I think a really neat touch in this game. It is, but where the hell was that statue hiding? It was just there. It's just a statue. <laughs> it's just in the middle. And then when you leave, the somewhere. statue just stays there and you just like beam yeah. back up to the to the mothership. <laughs> Somebody put a, a weird statue in the middle of a cave. Yeah. To everybody else. Yeah, I really like this game. And I, I think it's it's definitely still worth coming back to. They did a um a newer version of this, and I forgot the name of it. Uh but like a, a company just tried to make a newer kind of like a spiritual sequel to Act Razor, really? like Soul something. I don't know. I, I'll have to find it. It just came out like in the last couple of years. If I Google spiritual sequel Soul to Seraph, yeah, uh, it didn't get particularly well reviewed though. Unfortunately, <laughs> Sega's Act Razor successor is not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer. That's just what. Taku says well, that's I mean like bad. people really enjoyed games like black and white but that's just all god simulator you know yeah 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 I think this game holds up really well it, it was super fun to play um, I haven't beaten it yet I'm definitely going to keep plucking away at it it's it's funny too is when you said it doesn't like hold your hand the other game I'm playing like kind of side by side with this Zelda uh, Skyward Sword definitely holds your hand, like too yeah. much, arguably, you know. And they overcorrected with this because the next game after this in the Zelda series was um, Breath of the Wild, where you basically just wake up and they're like, "Have at it, motherfucker!" Yeah, which <laughs> I had luck. frustrations with that too. I got lost in Breath of the Wild too. Everybody gets lost in Breath of the Wild. I think yeah. that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do like. I tend to like onboarding in games that that hold your hand at least for the beginning. So you can really feel confident in the process. Yeah. I like games that let me play the game. It, I get really frustrated when I have to like go through a bunch of like, like story or tutorials. Right. I'm not like, necessarily. Yeah. I, I, I just get you. really frustrated. That's why I don't like Japanese RPGs a lot. Cause man, they, they will make you just sit there for hours. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I think I prefer like if you think about mobile games and the way that they do it, you're you're going through the game, but the first time you're doing these activities, it's telling you what you're supposed to do and why. Yeah. You know, so it's just it's taking you through your normal process of what you would be doing by yourself, as opposed to like a separate, like, here's how to press B to punch. You know, I'm not <laughs> not necessarily saying like a full on tutorial mode, but um I don't know, onboarding to the games, because every game's different and just Knowing what the process is is nice. Yeah, and back in the day, that was what the manual was for, right? Yeah, like, it's true. Now that they don't include manuals, they I do it in the game. Granted. Right. So you mentioned earlier how it's not God, it's the master. It actually was in Japan when this came out. It was God and Satan. Yeah. And then Nintendo of America with its, you know, censorship stuff, they turned it into the master. And there was also some other things that I don't think I even put on here, uh, symbols, religious symbols and stuff that they changed. There was the Star of David that they changed to just kind of an innocuous symbol. Um, but that that is something that happened. And then all three of the releases, J Japan, North, uh, North America, and Europe, all had differences, actually, in the difficulties and uh, certain specific things in the game were different across every region. So it, I found that to be interesting. Like, it, mm -hmm. And it's not so much as like there's one that's the best it's just they're all kind of different different ways nintendo is famous for that they would not allow any religious content right in america nintendo of america wouldn't uh there's a bunch of stuff that's changed like satan 
in the game in the Japanese game has horns, but in the American game he's kind of got like lightning bolts for eyebrows instead of horns, which is it's kind of weird. But yeah. there's a there's a ton that was changed in this game for the American release. It'd be yeah. fun to play the Japanese release. I wonder if the Japanese release is in English. Uh, if you play it on analog, probably. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times analog has patches for Famicom games and stuff. It was Act Razor without a capital R in Japan, too, which is not really that interesting. But I, <laughs> uh, I don't know why the U.S. capital capitalized R. Maybe it looked better. Uh, there was an arc- Yeah, Act Razor. <laughs> there was an arcade version of this game that only had the action stages. There was no God mode. Yeah, the, uh, you can access that once you beat the game as well. Yeah, like, uh, I think professional mode. It's like doubles. Right, everything's got double health. That was one of the things that's different between like Japan and the U.S. is that mode. Um, I think the the old like Nickelodeon video game show. I can't remember what it was called. I think they had Act Razor on that show. If I remember correctly. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. No. Yeah, there's a old Nickelodeon video game show. There was also a limited mobile phone release of this game in 2004 that had three side scrolling levels. I have n- I don't know. I didn't look at the images or video of that at all. Hmm. Was it just three side scrolling levels that were plucked out of this game? Probably. And none of the God mode stuff? Probably. That's weird. Mobile phone um, game in 2004. What were you playing that on your like your Star Trek? <laughs> i know that was before i got my first pocket pc in 2005 from sprint okay. it's like one of those slide out like it could play wow on it and everything was tiny because yeah. it wasn't formatted for you know like that small of a screen but i remember that was like that was the new thing was you know lcd colored screen touchscreen stuff i did mention that there was the cd vinyl of this soundtrack and then also the only other thing was to, to Briar's point, the last time this was available, this game, the last time it was available was on the Wii Virtual Console in like 2007. Like, you can't, it was not on the SNES Classic. It's not on uh, the SNES library on Switch. Like, that's it. So, this is made by Enix, which is now part of Square Enix, right? Mm-hmm. Has Square Enix put any games out on the Nintendo service, like the online service? Is Super Mario RPG on that? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> or Chrono Trigger or Chrono Trigger is not. They just they just re released Chrono Trigger like as on a cartridge. Like that remastered version of Chrono Trigger. I don't think Super Mario RPG is on the service, but it is on the SNES classic. Super Mario RPG is. Is it? So is like Final Fantasy 2 and 3, which is also, is that Square Enix? I can't remember. But they're not on the online service. Probably not. Okay. So I wonder if Square is going to whatever do like a package full of their best Super Nintendo games or something like that. That'd be an interesting package. Because what would you pick as Square's? Because they were Square. They weren't Square Enix at the time, right? That, That came later. It was like two different companies, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm looking at the full list here now. Uh, I didn't realize Wild Guns was on there. Yeah, that's a fun game. Anyhow. Yeah, I don't think any Square Enix games are on there. I wonder if they'll do like a collection of some of their best. Breath I mean, of they... Fire isn't Square Enix, right? They're coming out right now with their their uh, their remakes of the NES Final Fantasies, right? On the Switch Online service? I think it's on the Switch Online service. They're selling this as a cartridge, I think. Oh. Where? <laughs> Is that like limited run? No. I think so. We're like scrambling. Makes. It's like that, like the Pixel series or something. Oh, yes. That's like a Pixel Steam Remaster game, right? series. Yeah. Yes, it's Steam only. 
right now. I don't. But, know I mean, theoretically, the theoretically, it'll be coming out to other things eventually. Final Fantasy one through six. But I wonder how they're remastered. I think the pixel art looks really good, but people are upset that the menus don't fit at all because they use like modern uh, high resolution fonts for all the text in the game. Hmm. So people are kind of bummed about that. But other than that, I think it's supposed to be pretty good. I haven't seen a full review of it. It just came out July 1st, 2021. Yep. Oh no, I'm sorry. That article was written July 1st. The, the titles arrive on steam july 28th so tomorrow yeah i was gonna say because there's nell nell star was tweeting about like keys and stuff so go get go get you a key yeah is that all we have to say about axela axela yeah i did not remember the name for this fucking game (laughs) i don't don't know that is a different snes game i know it's a good one too I, I looked on Heritage Auctions to see if any of these had sold. There was one copy of of Act Razor that had sold on Heritage Auctions within like the last year, and it only went for like thirty eight hundred or something. Oh, Sealed that's it. Nine point two or nine point four, something like that. I know, like imagine <laughs> not going for one point five million. <laughs> this, uh, I would argue that this is kind of a it's it's a well known game, but it's also kind of a hidden gem to the general public. Like I feel like know. it's on everybody's top ten list though. For gamers, yeah, but you talk to like anybody that it's like, yeah, Super Mario Zelda, they don't know about Act Razor. Yeah, maybe. Metroid. Maybe. There was a there was also an Act Razor 2, which ditched the God mode. Right. And it was just a side scrolling action game, but it's not well regarded. Yeah. I I own that bad. as well, but I don't think I've ever actually played that one. No. It looks really slow. Hmm. Speaking of things you own. <laughs> Did you get any pickups? Uh, no, I haven't bought anything. Well, I've imagine not buying 20 <laughs> retro games. Imagine that. <laughs> but you've been working on like your con- your your, your um, arcade pad and stuff like that. Your arcade stick. Yeah. So basically, I went to the retro store, whatever it was. Like, probably, I don't remember. It was like a week a week ago, and I took a bunch of stuff in, and I got more credit than I thought I was going to get, honestly. And I've kind of run out of heavy hitters to get from that store. So what I ended up doing was I just, like, I have a long list of stuff to pick up there that they have, like, priced kind of under the market right now and stuff that they've had on the shelf for a long time. So I just started literally going through it was like, okay, that's a $20 game. Okay, that's a $30 game. Okay, that this like, I, like, it just got to be a long list. And then I also got some stuff on eBay. So these are all games from the game store that I picked up. Um, I'm trying to figure out I'll start with NES. And I'll go from like, cheapest to most expensive. So um, the only reason I picked up this is because apparently this is the rare variant label, which I don't know. So the untouchables for the NES, which I looked up some some video and reviews of this. It's not a good game. Um, <laughs> there was a couple of people that were like, I, I'm glad I experienced it, but I never want to play it again. But it's another one of those games where it's got like five different play styles in it. Oh, really? So, if I was like watching it and there's one scene where it's kind of like wild guns where you're behind the players and they're shooting like down alleyways. Um, there's another scene where it's a 2d platforming game. There's another one where it's an isometric platforming game. There's one where it's top down. There's another one where it's like a scrolling shooter. Like it's got a lot of variety in gameplay, but I don't think any of it's really great. But apparently, yeah, apparently the blue label is something they came out with after because of like licensing that had expired or something so they had to like um there's argument as to what exactly expired it wasn't like the movie rights it was like the actors rights to portray the actors Uh so like if you look the the, it's pretty kind of ambiguous who is on the cover of this so yeah i don't know it was interesting to me um james bond jr for nes 
So this was priced, by the way, at $24, which it goes for like 100 because of the very rare variant. Um, James Bond Jr. for NES, which also has an SNES version. And I don't believe either of them are good. It's a really slow 2D platforming type game. Um, I didn't even realize until after I chose this that the label was in pretty rough shape too, but they had it priced at 35. Just a lot of like, I, I, these are, to me, these are cheaper games, um, you know, comparing to other stuff that I've been picking up. I have uh, never heard of this. It was a cartoon apparently. Yeah. I bet the cartoon was probably better than the game. Uh, it's not looking good for that. <laughs> THQ game too, which is interesting. Oh, this looks rough. Yeah. Doesn't THQ make some good stuff? No. Oh. <laughs> Not back then they didn't. <laughs> and, Maybe they make know, good Acti stuff now. Actually, I'm realizing now Activision's been in the news with a lot of their stuff that's going on right now, which is awful. Um, but this I just realized is an Activision game. Galaxy 5000 for the NES, which is a good racing game. It's kind of an isometric top-down game a la, I don't know, like the Micro Machine games or Rock and Roll Racing for SNES. They say that this is like a kind of a predecessor in um, kind of in thought to oh, the Oh, yeah, this looks fun. Game. Yeah, so it got great reviews. And I'm realizing now the Activision logo, I should take a picture and put it on Twitter. Oh, it's the old one with the rainbow? It's got a rainbow on the label. Like, how far and distant is that away from the idea of Activision now? <laughs> you know, like the way that re what rainbows represent now is kind of inclusivity and stuff but i just thought that was i literally just saw that as i pulled the card out so that's kind yeah, of there's fun a bunch of shit looking. bags running that company yeah Activision uh, Blizzard. the last loose nes cart frankenstein the monster returns which by the way galaxy they had listed at 29 i think it's going for like 40 or 50 now um frankenstein it just any pretty much any time I'm looking at the at the shelves at this retro store, if I see something that's like eighty nine dollars, I'm like, why is it eighty nine dollars? And so I look it up. Oh, God, camera. I look it up and it's going for like north of one hundred and twenty five to one hundred and fifty bucks right now. It's not a good game. <laughs> it is not. It looks like Castlevania, but not as good. Yeah. <laughs> like ghetto <laughs> Castlevania. <laughs> it does Terrible. not it does not look good but i think it's just it's a bandai it's a bandai game and i think just you know it's one of those more obscure titles that tends to fetch kind of a larger price tag which is why i ended up picking up that that this was like the most expensive game i got from the game store not the most expensive pickup that i have for this week though all right moving on to uh snes loose carts <clears throat> The combat tribes, combat tribes, combat tribes, com combat tribes, combat. This label's in rough shape, which I wish I would have maybe not even picked it up. It's 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 a it's a cheap knockoff of Final Fight, essentially, and it's not. Oh, wow, there's good. so many of those back then. <laughs> it's it's a it's a cartoony beat 'em up where the graphics, the sprites do not look great. Oh my God, this looks <laughs> awful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, man, and 20, looks like they're dollars. they're really running running it fast and loose with uh, copyright infringement in this one too. He looks like Guile, doesn't he? Yeah, there's there's a guy that definitely looks like Guile. There's a definitely that looks like Karnov. There's a guy that looks like uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there used to be a clown, but I can't remember Bozo the Clown or something. Whew, man, this looks shitty. <laughs> Most of the games that I <laughs> this is up this are... is notable for like being like how. Oh man, and like it's got the last level from uh, Streets of Rage. I might want to oh, play really? this just because of how bad it looks. <laughs> like a meme. Yeah, <laughs> just for the combat, funsies. The, the combat doesn't look horrible. It's just the whole thing in general looks horrible. Like there's no frames of animation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Blowing Briar's mind. Uh, yeah, next looks game bad. is the first Samurai for SNES, which. Didn't look terrible. It got okay reviews. I'm trying to remember exactly what this one was. Um, oh man, I'm gonna have to. I, I literally looked all of these up like right before the show just so I knew. Oh, this looks kind of neat, actually. Yeah. 
It's like a side scrolling action game where you play as yeah. a shirtless samurai with a very with a, wide sword slash. Katana, yeah. So it looks like, yeah, like a platform where it's like Mega Man style. Um, because there's a lot of like jumpy stuff and you're on like moving vehicles and things like that. Um it doesn't it it got decent reviews. If I it got like, you know, between sixes and sevens kind of deal. So it looks okay. Uh it definitely looks worth a play for sure. Yeah. So that the was the art was, is pretty good. Like graphically, it's not yeah, bad. Yeah. So that was 29 bucks, which is, I mean, again, kind of in the same um house as what I'm been doing. Next game apparently had been featured on Anger Video Game Nerds recently. And I say recently, as in like within the last couple of years. Ren and Stimpy show Fire Dogs for SNES, which it's not a good game. Again, it's a very clunky, puzzly, platformery um, type game. And and I think the Anger Video Game Nerd is one of the it's one of those episodes where he's just pissed off and frustrated the whole time with the game. And um, nice. the the. I will say the graphics do capture kind of the personality of the characters and their kind of aloofness, at least for Ren. Oh, I Stimpy. disagree. <laughs> the colors are awful, but it still got some personality. <laughs> <laughs> so that one was marked at 35. This, I think since the Anger Video Game episode, this has been going up steadily. Okay. It's, there's something about that show when people see it they go out and try to buy these games even when they're awful just to like yeah. just for the meme of it i guess so there's that um you do you remember the show eek the cat uh somewhat there's a a game and it's made by ocean ocean pretty much played like they made all of the nes snes uh tv show movie games like a lot of them like literally the untouchables game was ocean water world for virtual boys ocean um, just a lot of them this is not a great game again it, it's a 2d platformer and there's a lot of like rescuing different characters but it looks painful like the sprites are pretty large and it just looks kind of clunky and slow and yeah not good yeah that doesn't look good no uh now there's a couple of decent snes games all right bonkers bonkers for the snes the you remember the show it was like the the Roger Rabbit light kind mm -hmm. of cat. Somebody described this. It was $28. Somebody. Oh, and Eek the cat was also in that range. 25. Um, somebody described this. I read on a review. It's like Sonic for the SNES. Okay. I mean, it looks, the graphics look really good. If you, yeah, if it doesn't you look, look at that it. at all. It's a Disney game. Um, you know, it's a Capcom game. That's probably why. Um, like, did you know, I didn't even know that it was a Capcom game until I literally just looked at it, but the <laughs> graphics look amazing. The platforming looks solid. It got decent reviews, sixes, sevens. Um, there were so many of these like mascot platformers back there. Yeah. Then though, it's hard for any of them to stand out, you True. know, like, so you could make it a, a seven or eight out of 10, one of these, and it's not going to stand out because there's be so any many character, you know, right. Like and this character, I don't know. Maybe they they had a cartoon or something. Did they? Yeah, the, the yeah. Disney cartoon. But I'd never heard of him. He was uh, I he was a cat. He was like a I don't is he Bobcat? He's he was a cop. So he was oh. like a crime fighting cartoon. And yeah, I re I remember vaguely the the cartoon. And he had a co not co host. He had he had another cop with him, and I don't remember what the character looked like. But I remember he had a partner. Uh, on the show i don't remember too much other than that i'd have to go back and look at it. it's probably on disney plus um this one i didn't even know existed until i was at the game store uh yeah bonkers was 28 this one was 35 prince of persia 2 which was on a lot of platforms pc all sorts of stuff they say it's really good i watched the video i mean it's 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 prince of persia you know the stereotypical kind of like jumpy fluid animation type platforming but it got wet like good reviews like eights nines in some places kind of story driven platforming type content looked interesting um, you ever played a prince of persia game i have yeah yeah the it's, old it's ones? kind of prince of persia and pitfall like where the i i remember specifically it's kind of where grappling came in 
where yeah, you they're, would jump. They're and... very much animation priority games. Yeah, they look a... fluid. Yeah, they looked great, but I never liked the way they played. I just I remember found them to be very hard and very frustrating. Yeah, I just remember specifically the animation of them grabbing onto the ledge and like pulling up and stuff like that. Like always, kind of it caught my eye. I'm I'm looking these up on YouTube as you go along, and some motherfucker uploaded Prince of Persia two walkthrough, but it's in stretched widescreen. <laughs> it's in GBA mode. You fucking monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, going along, I talked about this on the last episode. And I went back and ended up buying it. Jurassic Park for an uh, SNES, the first one, and the reason I bought this like specific copy i was pissed because it's an assembled in mexico cart for anybody who's been listening they know my opinion on assembled in mexico versus made in mexico is fine it's the assembled in mexico majesco releases which are terrible this is a first person so it shooter? Has, uh it's a platformer yeah you have a pistol you've never played the original jurassic park no it's like indiana jones kind of actually no scratch that this one is an isometric is the second it looks like there's parts that are isometric but also first person shooter yeah this like is different um, than what i remember i guess i might be remembering the second one i'm not sure but the box was made in japan the manuals made in japan because it's color but the cart was assembled in mexico so it's a majesco really released but the reason i picked this up and i looked this up after i got this very rare snes overlay for jurassic park that goes on your controller i wonder if that goes on like a Oh, it doesn't really because the the power the the start and select on these, but you can kind of see it. It and it shows like it's almost like an arcade overlay for your SNES controller. And these are pretty rare, just in general. Um, I'm not even sure where they came from. They may have come from like a Nintendo Power situation or something like that. There wasn't a whole lot that I could find on it, but I was like, you know what? For whatever forty forty dollars or something in credit, like I can justify. Yeah, forty nine dollars. Minus 10%. Goes the meme of the thing. But yeah, <laughs> Jurassic Park is kind of a classic. It's not a terrible game, but it's tough. Uh, and then two more complete inbox NES games from the game store. And then I have like six more complete inbox games to go through that were from eBay. Uh, Rambo for NES. Oh, yeah. Look at that cover art. God damn, he's sexy. <laughs> He's glistening. <laughs> Spoiler, it's not a good game. No, Made unfortunately, a Rambo didn't get a lot of love in video game form. Yeah, no. It is not a good game. Oh, what was the... There was a joke somewhere. It was... Um, oh, it was... Somebody posted on the Untouchables. They say, this game should be not touched. I thought that was funny. Because it was not good. Uh, but yeah, Rambo. It's it's a two. It kind of looks like Cliffhanger. You remember? Looks better than Cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> but it got terrible reviews. Yeah, uh, you have a lot of melee weapons, like uh, like daggers and things like that. I don't you get a bow and arrow as well. Yeah, I don't even think I saw him using a gun in this game, which is just. Uh... Um, and then last from the game store, King's Quest Five for nes which is a very story driven rpg from konami which i knew nothing about uh before seeing this at the game store and i mainly picked it up because it was complete in box in decent shape and the price wasn't terrible it was 69 dollars. nice rambo was 49 and the reason King's i picked Quest it up five was it's a it's a port from the pc it's a point and click adventure yes but it was highly reviewed by a lot of people like a lot of people really enjoyed it. That's awesome. I never, I didn't know that's happened. Yeah. So pick that up. So that's from the game store. That was in one trip. I got all of that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I walked out <laughs> with a, a handbasket. So you bring then, your own like a uh, a bag or basket. Well, I usually whatever I take in for trade ins, I usually take the games out in, but literally couldn't even close it. <laughs> Oh god. Now I have a box full of games. So I 
I talked about this a while ago, and I'll just touch on it. I had gotten originally this game from the game store, but it was in such. <laughs> Shout out to the game store. <laughs> <laughs> I have children squealing in the background. Apologies. Um, that's how loud my kids are. So I originally picked this up at the game store, but it was in such bad shape. I tested it on my original hardware. It was only booting up like half the time. So I took it uh, back. Yeah. It's okay. It's just talk. They're literally it. just outside the door <laughs> squealing right now. I think it's I think those are happy squeals. Um so Super Turrican 2. I ended up taking it back to the game store mm -hmm. and keeping an eye on eBay and I ended up getting a pristine copy, which I paid a little bit of a premium for, but I just it's a game that's super beat up every time I see it. So I just wanted to get a nice copy and I wanted to keep it. So that was that. Those um, Turrican games are fun. Yeah, it's it's a very, very highly reviewed game. So this was all the next five games are all from the same seller. Okay. Basically he listed some games and this was the first one I picked up and it was in such good shape. I basically, I did the thing where I say, Hey, can you ship it in a box? First of all. And secondly, do you have any other games? So this is what started it. Dark man for the NES. Oh, I love that which, movie. Again, awful game, but it's in the original shrink wrap. Uh, it is opened, but it just has the original shrink wrap. Another ocean game. Awful game, awful, awful game. But uh, video game, angry video game nerd actually did an episode on this like m a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And since then, prices on this has have really started to go up. And I was like, well, I've wanted to pick it up for a while. So now's the time, I guess. I paid premium on it on all these games. I, I got a decent deal on them for what I think they're going to end up being worth in like a year. But yeah, I definitely paid a bit of a premium for this one just because I don't see it pop up very often. This game doesn't look awful. It got terrible, terra bad reviews. Yeah. Yeah. But I will agree, like, the graphics don't look terrible. The sprites look decent. No. All right. So, yeah, I messaged the guy and he sent me a picture of a giant box full of, like, complete inbox NES games. Mm -hmm. And I cherry picked, like, four more out and gave him an offer that was fairly low and he countered. And what ended up happening was, he listed one of the games that the game that I wanted the most he listed. And he's like, ah, I got an immediate offer of 150. So I might just like, let it take its course. I'm like, I'm like, so you're not going to offer. I'm like, I was already excited about the games. Are you, would you be willing to offer or uh, like honor your original offer? And he's like, sure. So I got it for, I got these games for a little bit more than I wanted to pay, but I didn't want to let them go. So first game, Daydream and Davy for NES, which I had never heard of this game before somebody in our community talked about playing it as a kid. It is not a great game. Um, it's one of those like licensed games from from HAI and uh, all family series. It's it's a family. It literally says on the back nonviolent adventure RPG for the whole family. And it's got like a picture of um him with like a gun and a sword on the back. Yeah, like, I'm watching him fight like Cerberus or something <laughs> in hell. Like what? <laughs> so it's actually like a kind of historical educational game in a way, but it's still like a um I don't know how to yeah, now he's it. in the old west. It's not side scrolling, but it is 2D. So but he he can it's almost like you know in a 3D space in a 2D world kind of thing where he can go up and down and left and right. Almost Zelda. like yeah kind of Zelda esque but the levels were more 2D. <laughs> it's it like got, amazing. It got mixed reviews. It got yeah. mixed reviews. Some people really enjoy it because of their childhood and stuff, and some people think it's just not a good game. So, But, you know, obscure stuff I like picking up, especially when it's in good shape. You know, it's in good shape. It's complete in box. Yeah. It's got all the inserts and everything. It wasn't too expensive. Um, this was one of the cheaper games that I picked up. Uh, okay, so the next one. I've been looking out at the game store for a while, cart only, and then he I saw this in the box of stuff that he had, and I was like, well, I gotta pick it up. Jackie Chan Action Kung Fu. Yes. Which is actually a fairly well reviewed game. And this apparently was a port of a uh, Turbo Graphics game that was very well received. That's a good game. That's a legit good game. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so this was a port of that. And if you look at the NES graphics, like the sprites are fluid. He's He's got a giant head, which is kind of awkward, but the combat looks solid. Like the reviews were solid. It was like in the seven range. Um, yeah. It looks like a fun game to play. And a lot of people have said they enjoy playing it. 
Um, yeah, I've played the, the Turbo Graphics one, and it's it's fun. It's legit good. Yeah, this is one of those games again. It's really hard to find complete in box. Um, and just the way that prices are going, like there have not been any. There's been like one complete in box copy that's gone recently, but it was like super beat up and stuff, and it still went for a decent chunk. So I was like, yeah, I might as well pick it up now. Just obscure games are hard to find. Another obscure game in amazing condition, The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Oh, no kidding. Complete in box. Uh, not a good game. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, it looks like Contra, but like a cheap Contra port. I mean, actually, if I remember correctly, it wasn't like horrible reviews. Like they were kind of mixed. But it does. It looks there are some sequences where you get to ride on like a motorbike uh, and some other stuff. Some stuff looks interesting. But like it, this game was just in pristine shape. And again, another kind of obscure title that I that like to get River Phoenix on the cover. Is it? Is that who was on the show? I never watched the original show. I believe it was River Phoenix. Not sure. I didn't even know the show existed, and then I saw this game. Jalico, makers of not great games, right? <laughs> Is it Jalico? I just thought it was Jalico. Jalico, that's, yes. <laughs> I think Jalico's right. So the game, this is the game that, and I posted it on Twitter, so most of you, anybody that's listening that saw that know what I'm going to say. But this was the game that was I wanted from this lot the most, and I was willing to kind of haggle based on this. And then he listed it and he's like, I got an immediate offer for 150, like the second he listed it. And he was like, I don't know if I want to sell it to you because I want to see where this goes. And so I ended up like getting him to honor his original offer, uh, which wasn't a bad price. Like I have not seen these go for an average of these prices at all. So I paid cheaper than kind of the going price, but. I was trying to kind of, I wasn't trying to lowball him, but I was trying to get it for my price. Um, Darkwing Duck. Oh. And I've been wanting Darkwing Duck complete inbox for years. Um, this is not original shrink wrap because it doesn't have the HCL, but it is like Toy Works. Apparently, he bought it from Toy Works. And everything's in solid shape. Uh, carts in amazing shape. All these carts are in really good shape. The box is in good shape. Um, I already owned this game, cart only. So I'll be selling that or trading it or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I've been wanting a complete copy of this for a long time. Now That's I cool. might have all of the kind of spin-off Capcom games complete in box. Yeah, Rescue not, Rangers 2? Isn't that the like the hard rest, one to get? I don't have Rescue I have Rescue Rangers cart, but not that. That's going to be like a $1,000 game. But yeah. um, I think like Tailspin, Little Mermaid, uh, Little Nemo, Darkwing Duck, DuckTales. Chippendales, Rescue Rangers. I have all those completely in a box. Hey, they, and Capcom was doing some cool stuff on the NES. Oh, yeah. I didn't show... Did I show two weeks ago the... I did the cells, yeah. From the little remote stuff. And last, but certainly not least, the best game ever to come out on the NES. Ninja Gaiden. That is about Soda Pop. Cool spot. <laughs> <laughs> Seven up spot. It literally has the seven up logo. Yeah. On the game. It's like a it's a puzzle type game and it's not great. Oh, it's and not a platformer? Whole, no. The whole time you're playing it, spots like in the corner, oh, like doing dance moves and shit while you're trying to solve puzzles. Like, bro, calm down. <laughs> Stop moonwalking. I'm just trying to play the puzzle game and you're like interfering with my work here. Well, it's not called Cool Spot. It's just called Spot. Cool Spot yeah, was spot. the Super Nintendo SN, game. Yeah, it's, Cool Spot was the SNES one. Was that a platformer? I thought so. Platformer makes more sense, but yeah, yeah. this is a... Oh, shit, it looks good, too. Cool Spot? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. You're literally playing a level inside of a 7-Up bottle. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> Branding. You don't, Killing it. You don't see that kind of... Uh, those kind of games anymore. Gamers are more jaded now than they used to be. <laughs> they just have those advertisements in game. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good point. Cyberpunk <laughs> and such. Like they don't have to make a whole game about they it. They literally have play. billboards instead of racing games with branding yeah. on them. That's it. 
That's that was a big one. Those are some cool yeah. ass games. I mean, you, you definitely you, you started slow, but you ramped yeah. it up at the end. <laughs> yeah. that, 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 I, I kind of want to play this cool spot game now. I'm watching the Super it's Nintendo cheap. version. It's it looks cheap. awesome. I'm pretty sure you can get the card for under ten bucks. Yeah. It's like I'll emulate it. It's fine. Genesis. No, oh, I'm watching the Genesis that. version. Holy crap! This game is twenty dollars for the cart, but then completed Mox. It, it's gone up recently. Yeah. Well, those Seven Up fans, you know. I. I don't know if I have cool spot actually. I like games that uh, are like you take place as a miniature person in a regular size world. Like, so you're inside right. the seven up bottle, you're running past a Walkman that looks like gigantic, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. I like that. I might have that game as a cart buried somewhere in some bin thinking it wasn't yeah. worth anything. I can't remember. So it is your turn to pick next episode's game. Yeah, and and I was torn. I was like, do I go with kind of a hidden gem type game, like one that you may never even heard of? And then I was like, you know what? I think we need to go uh, back to something more mainstream that's going to be appropriate coming coming up soon. Okay. And something I've never played through that I really want to. All right. Metroid for the NES. Whoa! All right. Okay. It, running with the Metroid Dread theme. The very first one. Yeah, I was like, Metroid. I feel like it's appropriate. I have not played th all the way through it. I always get stuck. I'd like to beat it. I know that, you know, I don't think that, I mean, I don't know if the original Metroid is as well received as Super Metroid. I think but... it's not remembered as fondly. I mean, a lot of people who played original Metroid. I, it was revolutionary for its time. I played it when it was new, and it was outstanding. Yeah. But, uh, you, you know, Super Metroid did a lot of things like adding a map that really <laughs> fucking helped. <laughs> I do have it complete in box, so maybe I'll have to look at the manual on that one. Yeah, I don't know that it'll be all that helpful. I don't know. Do you, own, do you own the cartridge, by the way? I do. I own the cartridge okay. for Metroid. Um, but I have not played much of it. I think I played it a little bit on the Switch. Um, just to check it out, but I I played to completion Super Metroid on the Switch, on the mm. Switch Online service, um, which I hadn't done since I was a kid. I feel like I I figured we did Castlevania. Yeah, now we need to do Metroid so we can get the Metroidvania going. Yeah, I, I am down, man. I'm I'm down for a playthrough. Like I, I'll probably I'll be honest with you. I'll probably open up a uh, like a guide of some sort. Because yeah. you could spend a lot of time it. just wandering around fucking Metroid because there's no map. Yeah. That's a I'll cool pick, man. Like I'm a, I'm excited. <laughs> That'll I was be excited, fun. I was like, you know what? That sounds like a good <laughs> like a good plan. Yeah. I'll do an obscure one next time. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Is that gonna wrap up the episode? I think so. All right. I'll, I'll try and stitch it back together for YouTube and for <laughs> podcast. We'll see. So we had a little technical problems at the beginning, but I'm sure we can figure it out thank you guys for watching jay where can uh what, what are you up to this week uh gonna be working on some master vault of glass stuff in destiny tonight trying to get that triumph stuff done finish out solstice stuff um community games this friday uh probably we played destiny one raids last friday this friday we're probably gonna do like quiplash and other community type games have some laughs cool uh just kind of be in community together so that'll be this friday evening late if you're up late um otherwise you can find me on twitch twitter and youtube at j sniperton and uh always welcome to say hi or you know copy me on a crack meme that we can make fun of briar together on or whatever i'm down <laughs> <laughs> how about you briar uh watts and tefty and i are trying to get together for tribes of midgard have you seen that game yet it's like I a, saw like kind of the opening screenshot of it, but I haven't looked at what the game's about. It's kind of like a Diablo-ish game, but it uh, supports up to 10 players simultaneously, and it's got a really cool art style, so we're going to try and mess with that. Uh, we'll be streaming that. Uh, we got DCP coming up on Thursday. That should be an excellent episode, and other than that, I was just kind of hanging out, uh, enjoying the sunshine, doing some golfing, nice. you know. Nice. We'll see. Awesome. 
It's supposed Maybe. to be hot this week here again. Is it? Like yeah. as hot as it was last time? It's supposed to hit 100, but Ooh. not 115. Ah, that's hot. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for hanging out. We'll see you in the next episode. Until then, have a wonderful uh, couple of weeks. Bye. Bye, everybody.